When it comes to characters like Jesse Faden, it's the closest we're going to get to being able to play with Jean Grey using telekinesis or like the force like on some Star Wars stuff, fighting paranormal creatures. She lives in a world where it's got a lot of paranormal supernatural stuff, but you get to kind of play like a superhero kind of being able to pick up stuff with your mind and throw it at enemies, shield yourself, use guns on top of it, a special gun that reloads itself that's paranormal and it's alive in its own right. She also fights a whole bunch of supernatural beings with telekinesis and her gun and etc. I'm going to go through in this video. How strong is Jesse Faden? So there's this organization known is the federal bureau of control that goes after paranormal activities in the world in this universe this control game actually exists in the same universe with alan wake it's a shared universe there are objects in this universe that are literally alive this is a large building that you spend most of your time in in the game known as control also where the federal bureau do all their research paranormal or horror ish type of activities in the world like other entities and beings like the his for example it's literally an infinite house there's some floors that even look like this where it look like it got space or stars in it or crap i am dimensions and i never want to leave this is a game that deals with the multiverse the astral plane can cut into your dimension and house that shifts that's alive the bureau is an organization that always has to have a director direct the bureau of these paranormal activities jesse and her brother was one of the few prime candidates to be worthy of being director they were scoping them out their entire life kind of stalking them to see who's going to be the next director if one of the directors were ever to die dylan and i were both prime candidates experiments very different one sure she ends up embracing her role as the director heck we might even see her get more powerful in the future games or sequels after finding out how her brother's okay she just embraces it when jesse was younger she actually got involved with the federal bureau activities without even knowing it when her and her brother were accidentally came across this supernatural slide projector that was paranormal and wasn't normal that's where she got in contact with her literal power that she talks to like throughout the game polaris she calls her literal power polaris it's like her and the power have made like a little friendship you can even hear her talk to it in the game she's literally talking to her actual powers power you call polaris i'm just glad you're here with me from the outside looking in she looks insane when she says this stuff but she's really talking to her literal power inside of her they seem to be on the same size talking about this our enemy she talks to her powers when in marvel comics there's a character called polaris that kind of has similar abilities but with metal and telekinetic psionic abilities oh yeah when it comes to her uh, actual abilities she legit has abilities the closest we're going to get to actually having a game where we can play as Jean Grey this seems to affect her permanently where she just has powers just in general on top of her literally having psionic abilities or telekinesis she has a piece of standard gear that's technically alive too the service weapon that can only be wielded by those that are worthy aka those that's fit to be director it's really vague on what the board is in this universe but the board is apparently God and they are the ones that appointed you as director of the bureau evidently the gun itself as far as we know can't interact or talk but jesse herself even said that the gun itself is alive and the astral plane does exist gun itself does reload itself by the way and this gun's alive more proof that this is paranormal and this building is weird her picture just randomly pops up as the new director <laughs> you know the weapon itself has different forms like a normal pistol mode a shotgun mode my favorite basically an assault rifle mode a sniper mode it even has other modes like the rocket launcher mode it can even set mines to where you can detonate it remotely or she can make shields for herself with debris mix this combat in with her pistol combat even move really fast thanks to her psionic abilities and telekinesis to help her dash quick oh when it comes to her blast power by the way can break wood with her blast power or strong enough to break stone she has no problem breaking thick concrete walls like that with her blast power you get a closer look of how the wall looks when it comes to her blast power on how much she can destroy it it's pretty thick the hiss which are the main threat of the game shielding is bulletproof that doesn't stop jesse from simply being able to break through their shielding this is how she opens up containers just telekinetic consistently fighting supernatural beings and fighting them with her psionic blast power too consistently through the game even containment units that are used to hold other supernatural beings beings that are responsible for her in the first place she can rip off the hatches of something this big she can raise stuff out of the ground to help give herself weapons on the spot like that it's really vague what our limitations of her psionic or telekinetic abilities are she can lift up multiple things at once and things that are bigger than her or weigh a lot not only that it seems to be no effort and she can throw them up very far example here she lifts a bench lifts a desk lifts enemies that's a light work for her strong enough to lift a forklift we know she's strong enough to lift up three forklifts at once if she wanted to because the game allows you to like literally telekinetically lift up three objects at once once you upgrade the character enough via game mechanics she can lift these up and sling them very far with ease so her limits could definitely be more weight than just all three of these put together remember that one forklift can weigh four tons she can lift up three of them at the same time 
four plus four plus four that's 16 tons at the very least she can lift with her psionic abilities that's a bare bones minimum considering that she can lift all of this at once and sling them very far if she wanted to she can telekinetically move stuff that is made out of pure energy and lift them up in mid-air like that so her psionic abilities is kind of unknown considering what she can do to stuff like this big with her raw power thanks to her power of polaris if there's nothing around she can literally just rip apart the concrete and use it as a weapon or one can say fighting speed could be increased thanks to this power of polaris she can literally catch an rpg in mid-flight showing her reflexes too could be enhanced by polaris in the lore of the game they talk about these special rpgs that literally follow you they're coming around the corner to follow you she's one of those people to where i would say whatever her blast power is she could probably protect herself with similar amount of force so whatever her shields can take, it kind of get an idea of how much power she got in general. It's obvious she can protect herself from bullets. That's pretty obvious, right? Can block herself from concussal force like that, from hiss. When you dig in a lore, it's literally confirmed this entity in particular uses concussive blast to harm you. And she can shield from stuff like this. There's a lot of hiss in this game. None of them are considered on her level or even super powered people that are in this old house. When Jesse asked Langston about the different powered people. Do you often see people with abilities like mine? We have some paranaturally inclined agents at the Bureau. Nothing as impressive as you though. Of course, we did have your brother here. She has enough raw blast power to create bridges for herself. She has to go vast distances like this. Created all that. Wonder how much all that would weigh together. So she's the top of the food chain. Other than fighting the different beings in this game's universe. Like fighting these different entities and beating them and stuff. The threat in this game known as the Hiss. Usually possess people and turn them to their will. Notice how Jesse doesn't have to wear no special device like these other humans in this universe have to wear. To protect themselves from getting possessed by the Hiss. She's fine from it thanks to her power Polaris. The Hiss actually did try to take over Jesse but polaris will not allow this pretty cool relationship with each other while other people have to use these special hra devices to draw in the power of another higher being hedron who's a very top tier in as well to protect themselves against the hiss's influence when they gotta wear all this jesse doesn't jesse has a special power too to be able to cleanse people that are possessed too but the process rips them apart even her brother who's on her level too one could say thanks to polaris and stuff like that and their events as a child her brother dylan who's super powered got cleansed he was in a coma but in this occasion he didn't die so she can cleanse him but the process of eliminating the hiss from their body is very volatile and dangerous maybe we'll get a spinoff game with dylan in the future and play as him <laughs> i mean to show her power even more she even went into like this little mirror dimension and fought a doppelganger version of herself there's implications that this knockoff is not as good as the original <laughs> A lot of spooky stuff, altered items, stuff that can fight you or torment you if you don't do what they wish. That was the case with this mirror of fighting herself, doppelganger basically, thanks to stuff like this. That's a part of the lore. There was even a fridge in the game to where if you didn't look at it, it will harm you. So you had you had to have an agent from the Federal Bureau look at it at all times and the next person comes in and swap it out shifts wide fridge duty they say it's not until jesse coming in to clean it to where it didn't have this effect no more she's fought some strange abstract beings but managed to triumph over them all no matter what this higher psionic blast power can shield her from explosions like that it also helps having the ability to fly too ain't you wouldn't you say she's fought beings like this in other dimensions this is kind of like an astral plane fight like beings that are like the size of buildings and such this points in the game where you had to go after certain people that were in charge of certain aspects of the bureau but they were turned into hiss and you just had to take them out or defeat them she She's literally fought a being that was literally the mold itself. Not mold in the traditional sense though, but like it was this thing that was like poisoning stuff when she was doing chores for the janitor in this game. Best way to figure out her blast power, how much power she can just produce on the spot, I would say, is how much force can she shield herself from? Because I think them two are hand in hand. When it comes to physics, this universe seems to operate like ours, minus the paranormal stuff. It seems like she can shield from stuff that can level entire buildings with her blast power. Destructive capacity with her blast. Right there. And it can even strike with that level of force. So it's implications she can enhance her strikes with just the raw power. Like how she does that to concrete. Like that much destruction with a raw power. And the fact that she can shield from missiles. Implies she definitely has the blast power to blast apart a building easily. Big old rock she can just sling like that with her blast power. You try to come at her. She can just use the environment to stab you. Like that. Or just make bridges for herself. When it comes to psionic abilities, I wouldn't be surprised in the sequel we see her do some over the top stuff. Personally, I would love some melee combat in the sequel or something. Like, wouldn't it be cool to see her do some melee combos with the psionic ability? What if in the sequel she evolves enough to where she doesn't even need the service weapon and she can just use 
her psionic abilities as her gun. Like how Marvel characters use their psionic or telekinesis or telekinetic abilities. What if she evolves to the point where the next sequel she can use her stuff like that? Personally, I would prefer this approach. Making guns out of her telekinetic abilities or swords or bats out of her telekinetic abilities. A lot of potential for her future. I would just love some combos with her just bare fists to be able to hit combos on creatures and stuff. That'd be fun. They should make her have some Green Lantern construct type or give her service weapons some of these type of abilities. I don't know. But what do you guys think? You guys know she was this strong? Did you guys play Control? You need to play it. But I also want to give a quick shout out to those that have taken the time to donate to the channel. Helps out a lot, believe it or not. Respect Jesse Faden. I'll see you guys later though.